Hey Morales community, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor. In this Morales tutorial, we're going to check how you can get the token pair address that can be used to facilitate trades between two different assets or tokens on a decentralized exchange. We're going to test this out with Uniswap V2 to get the token pair address. This is an easy way to determine whether or not a pair exists. So here in our application, we have a few input fields we're going to use. We're going to add the first token address and the second token address right here. So I'm going to test this out with USDT. So I'm copying it from CoinMarketCap, pasting that in there, choosing Uniswap for the second option. We're going to test this, as I said, with Uniswap V2. So let's pick that one and then Ethereum. Hit submit and there we have the tokens we just choose and we get the pair address from here to understand this we have to understand a little bit more about liquidity pools it's basically tools filled with money and the pair address is the address of that pool liquidity pools more importantly are smart contracts that allow traders to trade tokens and assets whether or not there are buyers or sellers out there. In comparison to the traditional stock market that uses order book model, which means that each buyer and, and seller writes down their order amount and at which price. When a buyer and the seller meet at the price, the trade is happening. So the buyer gets the stock and the seller gets the cash. A liquidity pool has both assets of what you want to trade for and usually start with a 50-50 ratio, and then the price gets adjusted after a few trades based on the current ratio. Now let's jump into the documentation for this endpoint, and then also into the code so I can show you how you can build this app. We're going to use the get pair address endpoint that's below the DeFi API. And in our case, we're using the Morales Node.js SDK. But if you're using another backend language, you can choose your preferred one from this list right here. Let's stick to this one for now and take a look at the documentation where we have a few parameters to play around with. First of all, we have the two addresses and both are required. So is the exchange parameter. We have a few optional so chain, for example, that's Ethereum by default. And then we have the two block and two date parameter as well. Let's try this out with the same addresses as we did in the app and use Uniswap V2 to see the response we're getting back, which is the two tokens and their respective pair address. In this case, it ends with 56.6b. And you can do the same and try it out with Uniswap v3, for example, and we can see that we're getting a different pair address. So let's jump straight into the code and you can see that I have created a root folder called get dex token pair address. And within this one, I have two other folders, one for front end and one for back end. Let's start with backend and with package.json, we can see that I have installed four dependencies, Morales, Express, .env, and Course. And what I have done is I have added my Morales API key inside an env variable, and you can do the same. Now, if you don't have an API key, make sure you go to morales.io to create your free account, log into your admin dashboard, go to Web3 APIs, and there you have your API key that you can copy from here and add it in your project. Now that we have added the EMV variable for our API key, we can use it inside the index.js. First of all, we need to require the libraries we just installed. And my port is gonna, my server is gonna be on port 5001. And I've also imported my EMV variable, which is my API key. Now at the bottom of this server, we can use the start function provided by Morales and pass along our API key as a parameter. And at the same time, we can start listening to our server. Now for this server, we're only going to have one endpoint, which is the get dex pair endpoint. Now this endpoint is going to be called from the front end. Once that happens, we're going to use Morales EVM API and make a request to get pair address endpoint and pass along two addresses, the exchange, and then the chain that we want to get the information for. Once we get the information back from the request, we're sending that to the front end. And if something goes wrong, 
we're console logging that something went wrong along with the error message. Now let's jump straight into the frontend folder and we can start with package.json here as well. And we can see that besides the Next.js app that we have installed, we've also added Axios and React Select as libraries. Our application's homepage is the index.js file, which is rendering two components, the header, which is the title and the logo, and then the main, which is the form and the results. So let's jump straight into the main component and import Axios and React Select. React Select being the library that helps us create easy and beautiful drop-down menus. In our case, we have two, one for the exchange value and then one for the chain value. And for each of them, we need to add these values right here that we want to send along as parameters to the backend server. So once the user clicks the, one of these drop-down menus, we're gonna add the selected value through these two functions that we have created and add this value to the state that we declared right here. Now, once the user hits the submit button, then we're going to run this handle submit function and we're gonna query select each of these input fields by their respective ID and store the value into these two variables. Along with the exchange and chain value, we're gonna pass those to our server as parameters like so. And this happens once we do a GET request to our server, which is on port 5001 slash GET DEX pair. Now, once we're getting the response back, I'm going to show you how, how the console log looks like for that response. But at the same time, we're storing each and every of these um, values that we're getting back, which was for the first token, for the second token, and also their pair address in their respective state. Then we want to show the results. And at the same time, we want to empty both input fields and the drop-down menus. So the app looks clean and simple as it, as it did in the beginning. Now, once we've stored these values in the state, we can display them, which we're doing right here at the bottom in this result section. Now for our case, we created a box and there we have the pair address on the top. And then for each section of the token, we have their thumbnail, their name, and their th symbol. So it's as easy as that. Now let's jump back to the application so I can show you once again how it works and also take a look at this response right here. So I'm going to go once again to CoinMarketCap to copy respective contract address. So pasting that in there and pasting this one in the second input field. Gonna choose Uniswap V2 once again. And once we hit submit, if I open up the inspector console, we can see that the response that we're getting is this. And what we are interested in this case is the data object, which includes the pair address, the first token, and the second token, and their respective data that we're getting back. So guys, it's as easy as that. And you can create this DEX token pair address to see whether whether a pair address exists or not. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I will see you in the next one.